Okay, rose realities. If you've got roses, like it or not, you're going to have some disease issues. You can grow roses, you can grow roses, and you can control diseases. You can even grow roses organically and do that. Let's look at a few factors related to the diseases of roses. Uh, principal diseases of roses, uh, black spot and mildew, which look identical, and rust, which is represented by an orange pustule on the underside of the leaf. What are the precipitating factors? Stretches of cool, cloudy, gray, wet weather. Uh, basically, after you have an incident like that, you will have about 10 to 14 days before spores of these fungi will germinate, emerge, and start to affect your plants. So, well, what's a rose grower to do besides grin and bear it? Um, well, let's look at a few factors here. One is um, the nature of the foliage of any given rose will determine somewhat its susceptibility to or resistance to diseases. And there's two basic classes of rose foliage, uh, glossy, waxy foliage, and matte or dull foliage. And let me just say here, while I'm a, a huge aficionado of both old garden roses and modern roses, that modern roses have it all going on in terms of disease resistance in a comparative sense to old garden roses. And if you look at an old garden rose, the foliage will be, I'm not trying to be, uh, disparaging here, but dull or matte. And if you look at uh, some of the modern roses, particularly the class of roses, Floribunda or cluster roses, uh, you will see an incredible waxy sheeny surface. And I have here an example of that. These are two bushes of a recent breeding success breeding success both in terms of disease resistance, yeah, uh, breeding success in terms of a knock your socks off beautiful productive rose, excellent for cut flowers. It's a variety called Julia Child and I'm sure she would approve. It has a very fruity lemon scent, uh, a nice uh, yellow, and let me just say this about yellows. Not all yellows were created equally. Amongst rose growers you have uh, the weak and buttery yellows, and then you have the over-the-top highlighter yellow roses. You want something in between, rich but not too much, and Julia Child really uh, hits the uh, bullseye in that regard. It is uh, highly productive, that is it produces scads and scads of flowers over a pretty extended uh, cutting period of three to five weeks, and it is an extremely good repeat bloomer. You will get two, three, even four rounds of broom spring to, to fall. Um, and uh, not much to not like about it. Uh, but what we're here to look at more specifically today is the nature of the foliage. So if you can see that this is a waxy, sheeny leaf surface, the leaf cuticle has a, a resistant wax on it that keeps the water and the fungal spores from, as it were, marrying and breaking out, going on a honeymoon. More and more, Rose breeders are a succeeding at breeding disease resistance into uh, roses, and they're doing it principally through one class, the aforementioned Floribunda types. Uh, but if you're ever looking at a rose and you're evaluating it and you don't know, look at the nature of the foliage. Sheeny is disease resistance. Another thing you can do, because there's so many different localities within which you can uh, grow roses from the salt spray zone down by the Pacific to the desert. Uh, but what does well in your area, like real estate, it's all about location, 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 what are the environmental uh, climate conditions, weather and all that. And you can do yourself a favor before you venture into rose growing by consulting either just flat out uh, your local chapter of the American Rose Society, they know, or anybody who grows roses, they also know like that. So this variety might do better here, that variety there. Uh, you've got a better shot at succeeding if you're using varieties that tend to be disease resistant in your area. But you also can drift in a direction of Floribundas, which more and more are meeting that mark. Standing here next to a rose that is the 
prototype uh, of another class of modern roses called the Grandifloras. My joke is they should be called the Grand Bushes because everything about them is grand and bushy, big and tall. They're just like, they are technically a hybrid cross between a hybrid tea, the florous high-centered ovoid bud, and cluster roses or floribundas. And uh, we'll get to that in a minute, but let's look at it because this is a variety called Queen Elizabeth, which I said was the first release in 1953 of this new class of roses, the Grandifloras. Kind of popular in Britain, imagine that. Uh, but let's look at it. Whenever I go looking for rose diseases, to example, I run right over to Queen Elizabeth um, and because it is very disease prone. And yet, as you can see, it can be grown in a healthy manner. Uh, we have an uh, example here, just one or two leaves of a, a typical rose disease. This is black spot. You get, well, yeah, black spots on the top side of the leaf, followed by uh, a yellow uh, pattern loss of vascular capability and dropping of the leaves. But one thing you can do is come through uh, and just pluck the infected leaves off like this. Don't compost them, get rid of them. And where you plucked, you will have a bud that expresses a new leaf, maybe in less than a week, a little more than a leaf, a week. So you can come through and kind of, as it were, nip things in the bud. Uh, and it's a good thing to do. Uh, it sounds crazy and labor intensive. It's not that labor intensive. And you're just doing, as I call it, leaf patrol once a week or so. And it really can minimize uh, outbreak and spread of disease.